Welcome to Camping with Steve. Just leaving the car here in a parking lot because we got a pretty good stealther today. I've really scaled the gear back. Uh, I've got some different stuff that's a lot smaller because I tried to do a stealth camp last time and this backpack was like the most humongous thing that's ever existed. So we're in this urban area of Edmonton. It's got a greater metro population of, you know, around a million people. And there's so many wooded areas like this uh, right behind me. So you can see what's going to happen here. This place we're going to tonight used to be a campground up until fairly recently. It's been abandoned because they built a bunch of subdivisions all around it with really nice homes. And that is not cope aesthetic with campgrounds right in their backyard. So it's turned into kind of a city park uh, instead of a campground, but it will be used as a campground again tonight. There is still kind of remnants of the campground that used to be here. There's actually still signs that say what the site numbers were. So I'm going to sneak back in there. It looks like there's an old water spout or something. And it should be fairly level. should be one of the old campsites, but it's all grown in. I found a pretty good spot. It's a little close to the trail, but that's okay because I got the camo netting and everything. Uh, but it's stinking hot. That heat warning is back on and it's about 32 Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit here. And there's no breeze in these woods. So I'm going to get this backpack off and go to the outside, cool off a little bit and see uh, just how obvious the backpack is even through these woods here. Definitely potential to be seen in there. So I'll string that camo netting up and start to get the shelter set up. Then I'll just kind of abandon it and we'll go walk around and do the rest of the tour of this campground. This is the very first stuff I'm gonna put up. It's this. Comes with zip ties. I don't think I'll need them, but you never know. It's this die cut uh, camo cloth. And it's kind of like the material of like a J cloth for cleaning. So it's really durable. It doesn't make noise. It make much noise. And this will conceal things very well. Uh, I got the most appropriate color I could. I have another one for a slightly different season. Prime time hour for hikers and joggers right now. Real quick. That gives me that gives me a little more um, stealth here. There's another couple coming down the trail. So should we go back? of it's a dog running up to the campsite Woo. now that that's over um, the second thing I'm gonna do is turn on my thermocell insect repellent um, right after I move this leaf out of the way of the camera there you go little guy okay Whew. we'll get that going and the heart will start beating again and everything's gonna be all right my efforts to go lightweight um, I've got these smaller butane cylinders. Okay. Not 
nothing to worry about. Just a couple of cyclists. And uh, these smaller ones. Uh, and this model of a thermosel that screws right onto the butane. Um, I've shown that in a few videos, but in case people are wondering what it is that's driving the bugs away, I know there's sometimes new viewers to the channel that haven't seen the old ones. Thermosel. Yes, that, uh, they're not a sponsor. <laughs> it just works, so I don't mind showing the gear that works. All right, and I can see it lit up through the little viewing hole, and we'll let that gas the area here, and make sure not to leave any trace behind, because that's the reason they don't want people camping here. It's been pretty much non-stop with pedestrians and cyclists, so I've just been chilling here. I've got this little dollar store folding tripod chair. Uh, they're cheap and it works. So I got a tent footprint I'm gonna put down. I'm just using this little screen tent TV thing. It folds up really small. This is kind of parts of the new kit that I've got for a little more stealth here during the summer when I don't want to bring the whole kit. Okay, that's not stealthy. Um, note, Velcro's not your friend. For stealth gear, and neither is this neon green stuff. Okay. Oh, thank God it's gray. Okay. Throw this down here. It's got the sleeping bag and the shelter in it. This thing I'm using is called the Mosquito Pyramid Net. And Never even heard of it before, but I was in the store looking for a screen uh, and it wasn't even that badly priced, so this fit the bill nicely. I don't know how much this thing's going to do, but... Okay, I've had about enough of hiding in the woods here. I'm gonna get out there and have a uh, water and cool off in the breeze if there is any breeze. Oh yeah. Much better, much better. Oh, it feels good to be out of there and get some uh, get some air movement on me. So the main trail is this thing here. That's the one I came down on, and I am stealth camped right in there. I'm just out here taking a look to see what I can see, because that's what I do. If anybody asks why I'm out with the camera, I'll just tell them I'm trying to film a flying squirrel or something. I don't know, um, but stealth camp is right in there. The roads here are in fantastic shape and there's the evidence of the old sites right here. You can see an old water hookup it looks like. Well I was out here trying to stealth camp this earlier in the spring before there was any leaves out. Um, and it was way too obvious and that was the week I'd missed trying to find somewhere good out here was difficult and the families just wouldn't leave like people were here looking at the creek and I'm just trying to stealth camp um, but you know if families are out here and they see a weird guy with a camera um, that would produce an issue we don't like issues 
there's another old site here and nature has began reclaiming it. Well, they planted a few here so that people wouldn't keep camping. But uh, you can see there's water and actually, they've even still got the old uh, sewage connection hookups. A lot of infrastructure still here. Well, is it ever nice to not have that huge backpack on? Um, I only look slightly suspicious with the camera. This place is just crawling with people. This bridge here, I'm not sure, but I think it may have been the old entrance into here. Uh, when I was scoping it out last time, I came in from the other side, which turned out to be a much longer way to go than what I used today. There's also this road here, and that goes up to the main road. So these could have been both entrances, I'm not sure. Uh, it's just a part of history we'll never know. Well, there's not much left here at all, except for those sewer hookups, uh, those pipes, and um, it's just some posts that say what site it was. Um, it's still pretty hot. Uh, there's a nice creek here. I'm gonna wander down to the creek. I hope it's a little bit cooler down there. And I'm gonna bring something with me. I won't say what. Beer. Um, and we'll have step two down there. This is stealth mistake number one. I built this thing on an existing trail. Don't do that. That's why the dog came in earlier. Oh, there we go. As a matter of fact, this entire channel in general is just a cautionary example. Do not look up to me and do not look to me for advice on this. Uh, this could be trouble depending on where you live. get it how are beavers even moving these logs are they the size of horses or something like some of these are gigantic and they're they're chewing them down and bringing them over unreal down here by the creek is it cooler yeah is there more mosquitoes yeah but uh it's okay where there's more mosquitoes there's less people and i can enjoy a five of diamonds pilsner by Blind man brewing doesn't sound very good. Um, be stealthy as possible with these. I gotta get like twist offs or something. Oh, yes, liquid heaven right in the palm of my hand. Okay, guzzle this down. And when people are finished their after dinner walks, I'm hoping it's after dinner, must be. That's yeah, about 8 44. This is the after dinner hikes for people that are healthy and energetic. And um, they'll all go back to their homes, watch TV, and I can get down to the business of making burritos in the woods. I was going to cook up at the campsite, except the rich hearty smell of bean and cheese burritos wafting out of the woods is going to draw some attention. And it's pretty dark in there to boot. So uh, out here by the creek, there's a little more light and there's nobody around. So I can whip up a quick little shore lunch here, shore dinner and then we'll get into the woods when it's a little bit darker. Got the bag with the food stuff out of the woods. This place is really quieted down. People are scared of the dark, it looks like. <laughs> kind of burritos. Uh, what I got is this Mexican flavored rice, refried beans, cheese, and tortillas. So I'm gonna cook up the rice, dump in some refried beans and cheese, Put it on those tortillas and chow down because it's starting to get a bit hungry. One of these tiny MSR stove things. And that just goes on to, of course, these isobutane cylinders. Not much in there, but uh, it's okay. Just gonna cook up the rice. And that's pretty much all we have to do. Cook up the rice, melt the cheese, and we'll be eating in no time. With a setup like this, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> now I did measure out, what was it? One cup of rice, so I need two cups of water. And this little thing has actual measuring marks on it, so that'll be just fine. 16 ounces of water it is. So 
at the moment, being in the park right now, is completely allowed. I'm allowed to be doing this up until 11 o'clock. And then there's trouble when it comes to 11. I'm not supposed to be in here. Another reason not to cook right by the camp. These things look louder than spit. See how this uh, Mexican rice tastes? I did bring some taco seasoning just in case uh, it's not up to par. Rice is pretty much done. There's still some liquid in there. Let's see if I need the taco seasoning. Oh yeah. Needs a little something. should do it. So, <laughs> refried beans and tortillas. Tortillas are always a great thing for this type of stuff because they're, uh, they don't go stale very easy and they're pretty impossible to squish. So, I've been struggling over the years to find a decent can opener. This isn't one of them, but it's better than a lot that I've had to deal with. And we'll just scoop that in. Oh, it's like dog food. <laughs> Appetizing. Mm. Now I know you can open up the other end and then slide it out, but I want as few sharp edges as possible in the pack when I'm uh, bringing it back. Oh boy. It's going to come in one plop. Oh, that looks rude. Well, I'm gonna have some beanie burritos. <laughs> I hope this better decongeal in the heat here. <laughs> Look at that. Mmm. Now you're cooking with Steve. Boy, oh boy. And there's just enough room to dump in some cheese too. And of course we got the Texas Mexico cheese which features uh, a blend of pizza, mozzarella, cheddar, and Monterey Jack cheeses with jalapeno peppers. Um, oh boy, what have I done? Of course, it's like three pounds of food for me. This is the way I roll. It's good. Mosquitoes are actually not too bad. This is normally their prime hour. And there's the odd scraggler here or there, but for the most part, much better than far north. Okay. So for what this lacks in presentation, which it does, um, it actually tastes pretty good, the parts of it I've had. I've cooked enough for our army, as always. That's kind of what happens when you're dealing with a whole can of refried beans. I don't need leftover refried beans rolling around the backpack. So. Mmm. Tastes just like store-bought. Mm. That's good. And a good thing I'm not inside a tent tonight. Hmm. This is a lot of beans to eat. I'll do my best. Well, that was delicious. Sure hit the spot. Um, I'm gonna pack up and head back to the campsite. That noise I'm sure is not for me, but can never be too careful. Just on the way back to the woods where I got that camp and uh, get tucked in for the night. It's getting quite dark out here and there's no moon to speak of, just a crescent moon. And thankfully, I've got a flashlight, but I gotta use that delicately in a stealth situation, of course. So I have to give a huge shout out to 
the folks that have uh, donated to the cause here. And I think it's a long list today because last week I just kind of had an update on the bus. So I don't like to uh, I don't like to do shout outs when it's um, when it's not like a full good video. So there's nobody around. Um, it looks looks pretty okay to use the flashlight kind of covered up. I know people have suggested uh, to use like a red light, but I'm colorblind, so that really would affect me. I wouldn't be able to see a thing. Um, so the the bus is repaired. Um, good folks at Avenir Mechanical in up by Plamondon um, around Lac La Biche. He's the fellow I bought the bus from, and he was more than willing to help out. So uh, with buses, one of the tricky things is that not everybody knows how to work on them. Um, it's a pretty specific type of vehicle. And um, yeah, if anybody's up that way and needs mechanical work done on bus or anything big, um, I check him out. No, he's not paying me to say that, but okay, here we go. sleeping bag set up and there's well, I hope that's not a mosquito that thing's huge oh, I can see the steam coming off of like my hand my body it is <laughs> it's been a hot day you could say so um yeah I'll get this off and thanks again to everybody thanks for following along um if you like this sneaky stuff uh, please subscribe but there's also other stuff all the time um there's a bunch on the go right now. So, cheers everybody. So of course, um, it's just started to rain. Uh, I looked at the radar and we could have an interesting night, but there's, there's some gear here that I picked up today. And I'll show you in more detail in another video, but I felt actually bad spending serious money on gear because I normally really don't. And I've been stealth camping with like the bottom of the barrel stuff for quite a while, but it's just so just so big to put in the backpack. And if I'm gonna be seriously getting some stealth camping done, I gotta uh, have some lighter stuff and smaller stuff. Anyhow, so Thermarest, uh, Neo Air, Uber Light, and that will be the sleeping pad and it literally fits in like this the size of a hot dog or something and I have no idea how durable any of this stuff is I just don't know uh, but of course it comes with an inflation bag I did not know that otherwise I wouldn't have bought this little electric motor that will inflate it take a while to inflate this but we'll see if it even works if I'm doing it right oh, okay here we go yeah. that worked out pretty good the major reason I got this thing is it can deflate it too and that's always a real hassle in the morning trying to deflate these things and get out of here before the uh, constabulary comes through. Stuff this inside of here. That way it won't roll around on me underneath the sleeping bag. Okay. So this complete sleeping, sleeping system, seeping system, right under there. I'll grab a few twigs here and try to stake this in a little bit. The rain is beginning and my stealth thing is kind of blown around but the uh, tent, yeah I can see water beads in there already. We have 
to do some drastic action here and trying to remain stealthy makes it all the more of a challenge. I don't care if I get wet, it was a hot day. This will be downright relaxing and refreshing. check the radar. Now for some reason the radar isn't really playing the full the full thing but like we're right there and there's this big big storm coming in. Uh, I'm right at the blue dot there south of Mill Woods. Um, it looks like it could go on for half an hour or more so pretty much uh, time to hunker down I guess. Keep the midnight moths away. Oh, perfect. And yeah, I'll do more of a review on this stuff. Uh, when it's uh, a little lighter and we're not doing a full-blown stealth. Because I know gear's expensive and I don't want to lead anybody the wrong way. So far, it packs up small and it works pretty good. So. Okay, well, this is pretty much useless unless it stinks down, but... Yeah. I'm sure it wouldn't exist if it didn't somewhat work. <laughs> Getting too tired to care. If I wake up wet, I will wake up wet. <laughs> See y'all in the morning. Good morning. Uh, I think that was a pretty successful mission. Uh, it's quite early here, like 6.30ish in the morning. And that's when I gotta be up. If I don't want people walking their dogs, stumbling across me in the woods. So, uh, shouldn't be too much to pack up, really. Um, we'll see, like one of the main reasons with this Thermarest thing I got is, uh, Deflating it is a lot easier than trying to roll up and deflate this thing. I should be able to get this suction down pretty good. And uh, yeah, overall the gear performed pretty good, I do think. Um, except for this. This will require a little more investigation. I can see the concept of it uh, is pretty good. But uh, it does need to be staked down at the edges for sure. But I didn't get bitten by mosquitoes, so it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good success there. So I'm going to start packing this up, and we're going to get out of here. Uh, let's uh, fast forward through time as I uh, put this all away. Perfect, all packed up. Let's roll. Oh. Oh. It's not mine, but I'll throw it out. 
There's not even any garbage cans around here. Wow. Okay, well, we are out of the woods, so to speak. And uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. Right in there. That would actually be pretty obvious without the uh, without that camouflage tarp. So that was a great success. Uh, that is how you get some stealth camping done. It is getting pretty smoky around here due to these wildfires all over the place. So, um, wouldn't want to be doing any major hikes right now or anything physically exerting. So, that's a good thing we're stealth camping. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, just packing up, and yeah, we got about eight more to do in the area here over the next short little while. And uh, they're all planned up and all ready to go. So, until next time, uh, you've been camping with Steve.